Today, I'd like to talk about something a little bit more personal, a little bit more sensitive for some of us, and that is the death of somebody that you know. It could be someone close to you, it could be a friend, a family member, or it could be someone that you've never even met personally at all that still had an effect on you. Now, recently, as many of you know, Gilbert Gottfried passed away, rest in peace, and he had a big impact on my childhood because I would see him everywhere on TV growing up in the early 2000s, you know, late 90s. This guy was the parrot in Aladdin. He'd be talking all this shit on the VH1 pop culture reference shows. It seemed like there couldn't be a channel I'd pass by where you wouldn't see like a funny Gilbert Godfrey moment. They'd, and every time he would crack me up. And so now that he's gone, it's given me this chance to reflect on all of these laughs I would have never even really thought about. These happy memories I had as a kid, maybe scrolling through TV or something along those lines, watching a movie. And I, I look back on that, I'm like, God, what an awesome thing to be remembered for. It's really, his, in my mind, his death isn't this sad thing, but it's something that reminds you how happy he made the world. And to pivot a little bit, um, I also had another death in my family recently. Uh, that was my grandma. And this one was something that was a lot closer to me. She really raised myself and my sister. And uh, it's a very similar thing to where, like, I, now that she's gone, bless her soul, she almost hit 100, by the way. She Now that she's gone, I, I think about, man, I didn't have a single bad memory about my grandma. She only was kind and and loving, and she worked so hard to raise everybody on my mom's side of the family. Um, including me, and uh, yeah, she's just amazing. And uh, to me, I I talk about these things, and I look back on it, and it's not meant to be, it's not sad. It's really, it's quite beautiful, I think. It's quite, like, empowering that we can look at these people and their memories um, give us something to smile about, you know? there's it's, it's not about sitting here and, oh, they're gone, and I'll, you know, I'll never be able to talk to them again. It is sad when you live in, in that sort of, uh, in the now, but if you think about, their memory um, with most people that you know, you know, you'd be surprised how positively you'll remember uh, people. Now, it's not true for everyone, but um, in the case of these two people in my life, um, their passing, you know, it is something to be mourned. It is something to be somber about, but at the same time, respectful about, at the same time, I find myself wanting to spread the positivity of their lives, not, not to spread the mournfulness, but to, but to say, hey, this guy was funny. I mean, like, isn't it amazing that like we still have we can still cherish his memory or you know wasn't my grandmother amazing a hundred years old she barely missed a hundred by a couple months and honestly i'm gonna give it to her you know if it runs in the family i think hitting arbitrary time barriers is in my blood so with that said Guys, I have a run coming up right here. Uh, this was a very chill one, and I had a real blast on this run. It wasn't the fastest ever time, but it was a really good time nonetheless. A lot of really good recovery in this run, but most of all, I want you guys to kind of just pay attention to my overall demeanor, my attitude. Um, you know, I really picked up my uh, energy, and I talk, talked a lot in this run. Um... And keep in mind, this is in the wake of my grandmother's death. This is in the wake of being told in my stream um, this very day that Gilbert Godfrey passed away. And it gave me a lot of pause for thought. So I made sure to dedicate this run to both of them. And um, I really hope that you guys enjoy and that you can look on the death of someone close to you in a positive light and remember them for everything that made them great. So on that note, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, a gl the, the term glitch uh, is very subjective when it comes to speedrunning. But it'd be cool to try to, you know, make my own definition for it as it pertains to this game. That'd be fun. What's EasyScape's definition? It's an unintended mechanic plus an unintended result. So let's let's uh, play devil's advocate here and say that charge gliding and flame charging are unintended mechanics. Oh, I see. I guess the, I guess those would be like intended mechanics with unintended results. Hmm. I mean, to place all, to place the entire weight of a definition on the intention of the developers, I think is a little is it's it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit foolhardy, I think, that it's like we're going to base it all on intention or unintention because you can't know what a developer intended or didn't intend. 
Um, but you can like measure, um, for example, if like if there's like a bug that you exploit, you can like measure that in the code in like a, in a memory address, for example. So that that would be like something I would I would want to explore a little bit is like is like what memory address is being um, corrupted when you do the zombie glitch, for example. And so there you go. There's like a concrete way to measure a glitch. There is no memory address being corrupted when you uh, when you flame charge or charge glide, or go out of bounds for that matter. So there there's like a there's like an alternative way of defining that. Not I'm not saying what what Easyscape said was wrong. I'm just saying it's like I, I would like to find something that's a, that's more concrete than just lying on the back of of it was this intended or was this unintended because that's still subjective. What's the point of defining something like that if it's still going to be so subjective? The point of defining it is to remove the subjectivity. Well, so yeah, is, is a proxy a glitch? You know. So we we could take we could take a uh, the memory address of Spyro's like momentum, and say that if it like makes this like jump. Like from this value to this value, like to it at this speed, then we can call that a glitch. You know, we can define it like that, like concretely. You know, because in no like normal gameplay would Spyro's momentum value um, jump like that. Or if it did, that that would be considered a glitch. You know. But that's just like one way of like measuring it, you know? Put, putting some objective measure on an otherwise subjective phenomenon. That's like my thought process on it, at least. And yeah, as you said, Toasted, you know, the, uh, the actual flop, you know, preserving momentum is an intended fail-safe mechanic. You know, but it's used in an unintended way. So how are we going to say whether it's intended or unintended? Well, we can measure it, you know, and then use that as a uh, as a basis. And granted, it's still arbitrary. It's still like going to be an arbitrary measure, you know. But um, at, at least it, it it gives more of a uh, objective. Um, it's like an objective measure to a subjective phenomenon. The intention behind game mechanics. And thus, the, the, uh, the definition of a glitch. So that's a cool idea for a video. I'd have to download BizHawk and get all into that, though. Or maybe try to dig up some videos of, uh, of BizHawk gameplay. That'd probably be easier. Dig up some videos from Lucia or Nitrovsky that demonstrate proxies or other glitches. I might, uh, I might DM Lucy about that. Record some gameplay in the BizHawk viewer with uh, memory addresses showing of like proxies and uh, zombie glitches. What number run am I? I don't know. This has got to be like my 20th run of the day or something. I've been going kind of ham. I made one run all the way to, um, to what, like Terrace? And I missed a gem there, so I reset.
spin jump is a glitch? Um, I don't think so. I mean, uh, the, the phenomenon that you're like describing is pushing up against a uh, a ledge while turning into it and charging to get up it. Um, that's good. That's like a harder thing to measure. Um, I wonder what like sort of like memory value you could look at to a. Uh, you could probably look at the actual coordinates, Spyro's coordinates, like his uh, his Y coordinate in the in the actual plane of shit. And if that Y coordinate makes a jump, you know, of, you know, whatever amount of units, then you could call it a glitch at that point. That's like one way of measuring that. Are you, are you guys like seeing what I'm saying here about like defining a glitch by using like actual memory addresses and and putting parameters on them? Instead of just saying, all right, this was intended, this wasn't intended. I think that's a cool idea for a video and a, and a cool way to, like, define a glitch. Which, which, again, is a very subjective, like, phenomenon. It feels like not a glitch. I mean, I, if, if you want my opinion on how things feel, I think there are no glitches in this, in, like, spin jump or charge gliding or flame charging or any of that proxies i don't think those are glitches but that's like that's just my feeling you know that's just like my that's like my opinion you know i'm not talking about that i'm talking about like measuring it and saying all right we're gonna make this value or a jump of this value within this amount of time we're gonna call that a glitch I mean, it makes sense to me to, to look at it that way, to look at it from like a code memory address perspective rather than to look at it from a, oh, my opinion is if you're out of bounds, that looks glitchy. Therefore, it's a, you know, come, I mean, come on. Like, I think we're, we're past that. We're past that, you know, discussion, I think. That discussion has been had enough. Like, let's define it. Why not? Yeah, I mean, that's that's how I see it, uh, MC, in this category. Again, just going by my feelings and opinion, yes, that's how I see it. Whereas someone else probably doesn't see it that way. Like, look, I'm jumping from the second stair, so unintended, right? Therefore, glitch? <laughs> you know, like... You guys see what I'm saying here? It's like, it's just a, it's kind of a pointless discussion to talk about our opinions on what a glitch is. Based on what's intended. Like, you fucking have any idea what the developer's intended, you know? How many dragons could I name? Uh, maybe like a dozen. I couldn't name like every single one. Unless I like sat down and like memorized them all. Okay, only losing like three seconds there. That's not too bad, considering the missed jump. Glitch or exploit? I would call like an exploit using like parameters like say you do a spin jump and spyro's y coordinate jumps from like below the ledge to up above the ledge and we measure we say okay if spyro's you know y coordinate moves like f whatever 50 units up in the span of one frame then we'll call that a glitch then anything less than that would be considered that still appears glitchy would be considered an exploit and anything more than that could be considered a glitch, which again is is arbitrary. It's still arbitrary, but it's it's a objective measure. And if there's nothing that we can measure that like that uh, or or put like an arbitrary like measurement like definition, like for example charge gliding like that can't be considered a glitch because how do you like even measure like the the intended and unintendedness there what what we're doing is we're trying to measure intendedness and unintendedness really 
give some degree of med rather than just saying this is intended this is unintended we're trying to say all right well this is unintended because spyro jumps x amount of coordinates or you know or tell or this memory address gets corrupted or or something like that spyro's health value uh gets stuck at zero when it shouldn't be you know, due to like a zombie glitch things like that so we call it a glitch because that's like a measurable way of looking at intendedness now still it's still arbitrary it's it's not like we're taking out everything that's arbitrary it's just we're just we're just we're just we're just making it a little like you know a little bit more uh, objective that's all it's still arbitrary but just a little more objective i don't know i think it's cool i think it's a cool idea for a video but like i said i need to get someone like lucia or nitro probably lucia i'd hit up to uh Maybe get in a Discord call with uh, with Luckix and uh, do a, uh, you know, tell them to fucking, you know, do a proxy here, do fucking that there, and just, like, show the memory addresses and, like, say, all right, we're going to focus on that one and, and just discuss it. It's just a fun way of arbitrarily analyzing the concept of glitching, you know? Just fun. It's not like it's gonna be, it's not like it's a breakthrough, you know, or anything in some way to But it is it is a cool like learning experience and a cool like way of objective objectively analyzing a subjective phenomenon. Here's the other thing is I'm, I don't even think that doing a spin jump would cause an irregular uh, Y coordinate change So it's gonna that might be one of those things that's hard to measure and if something's too hard to me like if you can't measure any like n any like uh, unintended quote-unquote change in a, in a memory address Then you can't call it a glitch like simply put if you go out of bounds you know like there, there's no thing in Spyro's code that like that avoids you out or something like I, I don't even know But it's, it's just we need to find stuff that can be measured and then use that to determine whether it's a glitch How fast Spyro's coordinates change from one spot to another something like that It's something that uh, would take some some time and testing it and hey, maybe maybe when I do sit down in a in a discord call with someone um, You know, we're actually looking at it. We're like well you know, there isn't a meaningful change in any memory address here. So therefore, it's not a glitch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that that could be like another conclusion to be drawn there. And I think spin jumping might be along those lines where I don't think Spyro's Y coordinate would make such a quick jump like that. I don't think that's exactly what's happening. Rather, I think it's more of an artifact of the collision of a ledge than it is a uh, exploit on Spyro's Spyro's mechanics. Yo, Jabba, thank you for the prime. You're so used to the word uh, glitch used to used to describe anything even slightly jarring. Yeah, and that and that's just the whole uh, that's the whole issue. I think is that for for someone who speedruns the game a lot like me, we we take a, we almost take offense to someone calling something that we would call an exploit a glitch. You know, because because when you're so intimately familiar with the game, it's like those those two things are distinct. But how distinct are they really? That's like the question we want to answer here in this video. Thanks for the good lucks, Imba. Losing some time here. I don't know, guys. I don't think my I'm I'm just too talkative today. I think I, I don't really have the the. I'm starting to get hungry, you know. Like I'm just I'm having too much fun here. I'm having too much fun to get a good time. Like <laughs> I know it sounds kind of fucked up here, but. I'm literally having too much fun to play this game, like, at, like, peak performance at this point. Which is, isn't that kind of sad, you know, like... 
Oh, I see you're here. It's like classic. Oh, I see you're human. Uh, you are going. Your speed run will now suffer for that. <laughs> hey, whatever. What are some of the most obvious glitches? Uh, the one I, I keep referencing is something called zombie, where you set spark you you take damage when sparks is gone basically, and what that does is it keeps Spyro's uh, Spyro's like health value. I'm not actually exactly sure what happens. This is again something I would want to analyze in Bizhawk with with someone, but um, I'm pretty sure Spyro's health value rolls into like the negative or goes into the zeros. Um, but he doesn't die, so he doesn't- he can't take damage after that. So that's like a measurable way of like, of uh, defining a glitch, as we say, alright, Spyro's health value is this, and he is still alive. So that- if Spyro's health value is less than one, and he's still alive, then that's a glitch. That is an unintended- that is- that is, I think, comfortable to say that that is unintended, and therefore a glitch. And measurable in the game's, uh, in the game's code. And if you want to get really specific about it, you could say that when Spyro's, normally when Spyro's health hits zero, you know, after taking damage without sparks, that it would run a certain line of code that triggers his death animation. And so by skipping that line of code, you cause a glitch. That, that could be a very technical way of explaining it, though I, I don't know if, I don't think we have access to the source code of this game, and nor would I understand how to analyze it. So I, I will have to stick with just memory addresses for the sake of this video that I have in mind. Oh man, that was not good. But yeah, that's that's my whole point. It's just like using the, the code or memory addresses thereof of the game. Using the actual numbers that are happening. This, ga this game is like, a video game is all n ones and zeros, y'all. Like, it's... There's very little actual subjective phenomena happening here. So why not use the objective, like, numbers to define a glitch? Like, that's... It seems obvious, but it's something that we don't do. It takes a lot of effort to, and thought to, like, go there. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. What's up, Hypno? It takes time for the CPU to process an instruction and you interrupt the CPU. How do you, uh, if you, if you don't mind, like, um, cause I don't understand how to like, um, look at that, like in a, in a program or something. Cause like, um, you know, like I was saying, I would, I would use, um, BizHawk or use someone who knows BizHawk in a discord call with them. And, um, in, in BizHawk, you can look at the memory addresses. But I'm not sure if in that program you could look at the CPU timing as well. Is there a way you could check the CPU timing of an emulator? Maybe using BizHawk or something else? That would be my, my question for you there, you know? Because it's all about stuff that's measurable, like... Because I'm not saying what you're saying isn't true, I'm just saying, like, I want to be able to, like, look at that phenomenon and measure it. For the sake of, 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 uh... Of defining everything. For the sake of the bid. Know what I'm saying? But hey, you know, if there's a way to look at the CPU timing in BizHawk, then that could be another clue for us to analyze, another piece of objective numerical fact for us to draw conclusions from. Run an emulator through easily you said you should be able to easily run an emulator. Uh I I think you're- I don't know if you realize who you're talking to here. I'm a fucking idiot, okay? Uh, easily might be a strong word, but, um, I ask Neon, since you're talking about it, you seem to know a little bit more about it than I do. Um, I would ask you to, while we're thinking about it, if you could, like, look up or maybe download an emulator, maybe see if you can figure out how to do that yourself, then you could- then we could, like, get something going here. 
how to measure the CPU timing uh, in an emulator. Like I, I, and then use that as a measure to um, to decide whether something's a glitch. Like if you interrupt an instruction, because um, it seems to you like like uh, it seems to me like you would, like you understand how to do that. But uh, the thing is, is I don't understand how to do that. So that that's my only issue about it. But if you want to help me out in this like little journey here and, and try to figure out how to do that yourself, I, I would really appreciate that. Any little step that we can take to to measure what an, what a glitch is, I think, is is highly relevant to this conversation. And yeah, and thanks in advance if you do end up, uh, you know, fucking around with it for, you know, for an hour or two or whatever. And feel free to, you know, DM me with whatever you find. And again, it's all about just trying to find, like, a viewer for the, uh, I guess, for the CPU's instructions. Or the way the CPU processes instructions and a way for us to, like, view how instructions interrupt, get interrupted in a CPU. Like, a viewer for that is, like, what I'm talking about just to make sure we're on the same page. The HelloFresh was fire, dude, nice. Thank you for getting that, Jay, really appreciate it. No, and thank you for the donation by, by extension of this sponsorship, that means a lot to me. What'd you get? Wow, wow, well yeah, I'm just gonna no reset this run, guys. I'm, I am like over trying to be Mr. World Record right now. I've been going for like two and a half hours at this point. But yeah, if we can find a like a a CPU process viewer for Spyro, like in an emulator, and then do a glitch, and then be able to say, all right, well, this CPU process got like uh, interrupted, you know, and, and point exactly to that, then that's then that would be fucking money as hell for the sake of defining a glitch. But keep in mind, I am very not technically inclined, you know, I, I, you know, the, with this sort of like, um, oops, this sort of discussion, it gets technical real quick, like, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep things, you know, trying to be honest, first of all, about how, like, kind of technically unskilled I am, and secondly, just trying to, like, um, you know, decode some of this for myself, and and be able to to regurgitate that on a YouTube video and be like, all right, we're looking at this, 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 and we can tell that by this happening, you know, we see that this happens in the CPU or this happens in a memory address or this happens in the code. And that uh, is not supposed to happen because normally this would happen, you know? And if you could, and if we could do that a whole thing and show that like in an emulator or something like that, that's so cool. Cause that's like such an objective way of measuring a glitch, like, and it's not, and it's no longer about like, oh, this is intended, this is, this is unintended, but rather it's like, this is intended because, and this is unintended because, you know, you, we finally have like the because part. And again, still arbitrary measures and still a bit of speculative um, thinking in terms of intended and unintended, but at least something to measure, I think would be intriguing in terms of uh, Glitching. And this is, this could even just extend to just looking at the memory address. You can look at memory addresses in uh, BizHawk while you play a game in real time, and um, you know, setting getting a memory address to be set to something that it would normally never be in gameplay is another way to de to define a glitch. And so we'll we'll end up like creating a like a set of arbitrary glitch definitions based on on actual in-game phenomena that's like measurable. I think it's, I think that's an awesome idea for a video, like what, like defining a glitch, defining a glitch using code and science, using facts and law. Literally defining a glitch using facts and logic. <laughs> Great video title. What is a glitch? Just a miserable pile of secrets. Oops.
The hard part is finding the correct memory address. That's true. There's a lot of them. But luckily there are uh, people who have done a lot of um, preliminary research in BizHawk, looking at the various memory addresses and finding which ones are which. Um, people like Piper, Lucia, Nitrovsky, these people have a lot of intimate experience with BizHawk and memory address um, observation. So they, they will be, those people will be valuable resources for me in this in this whole thing. There's a glitch that happens due to the laws of physics. A cosmic bit flip. How does a cosmic bit flip like manifest in game? Just in any video game. If you can like give me like an example of how that like shows in gameplay. Does it not manifest in gameplay? Is it like that small? Or can it have, like, far-reaching implications? What's up, Jack? Oh, so that is the, the explanation for the uh, TikTok clock up warp. Like, there is an actual explanation for it, and it's a solar bit flip. It's like f like physics and the sun affecting, like... The, well, it's an emulator also, right? Well, I don't know. So he was playing on a Japanese emulator, or VC, I think? I don't know. Is that actually, like, the only possible explanation? I'm still a little lost at what is a solar bit flip. It, it, you said it has to do with like the actual physical nature of the world, right? Because solar means sun, so it's like the way, the way the sun like affects like the physics of the world affects the way the code runs is like what I'm gathering. I might need a little bit more explanation than that without getting like, you know, keep it in layman's terms for me here. Keep it in very oversimplified terms. But am, am I on like the right track there? The sun like affects the physical like game. Like to such a small degree, but it can still have like implications on on things. It's a particle hitting part of the hardware itself. So like, so going back to the TTC up warp, that was done on, an, on a Japanese uh, Mario 64 emulator, right? So there is no hardware there. Unless we're like saying like the computer, the computer's hardware, or, or more, more reasonably like an emulator, an actual issue with the emulator itself. Maybe not the sun getting involved, but just the emulator having some sort of glitch. Yo, new nine. Thanks for the good luck. What's up, Skippy? Yeah, we're big chilling right now. We're talking about uh, glitches and memory corruption. The way, the way games glitch, you know, and and what is a glitch, and how do we measure it, and how do you define it? Looking at the memory addresses, the code of the game, the way CPU timing, um, like the way a, a CPU reads instructions, how you can interrupt that. And now we're talking about something called a solar bit flare which, I, if I'm understanding correctly, is a natural phenomenon that, that occurs when a, when, a, when a physical particle touches like part of like the motherboard or something on a, uh, on a computer, which affects the way something is, um, which the way it affects the way code is run, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm st I'm still trying to understand it myself. It's a bit with this uh, with this type of conversation, things get complicated very quickly. You know, just to reiterate. So, you know, forgive me for being a bit of a caveman in this regard.
just an intriguing conversation though, to say the least. the sun can affect electron look i mean i don't know but the the phenomenon is called a solar bit flare which leads me to believe that the sun is involved i don't know why they would put the word solar in there otherwise i think uh i think this kind of conversation gets at um something about computing which is uh, that's sort of an interesting thought is we're, we're led to believe that computers are infallible like if you run something through a calculator it'll always give you the same result however um, every piece of technology is um, is limited in its accuracy by its physical components you know being accurate and being uh, well maintained and so forth and so on so so a computer is only as reliable as it's like, um, as it's physical, as, as the motherboard it's like built on, so to speak. So with that said, I think that's kind of like what we're talking about with this whole solar bit flare thing is that like, it's a piece of like some physical phenomenon with the, with the actual computing hardware that affects the way the, uh, the software inside of it is runs and thus incurs a glitch, so to speak. Yeah, you can send me a video, I don't care. Yeah, you can totally DM me on Discord, Neon, like whatever info you think is relevant to helping me define a glitch, you know, without getting too crazy off on a tangent, just stuff that you think might be helpful um, for me in making this video. Especially like what I'm looking for is like, uh, are like, uh, viewers for like not just code but like um you know memory addresses we can view in bizhawk and you were talking about cpu instruction reading earlier if there's a, a viewer for the way we can view um the way cpu processes are interrupted maybe su such a such a viewer exists within bizhawk um, that's the sort of thing that i would like to see because obviously all this stuff you know there's there's tangents upon tangents to be had here so Let's try to stay focused with our discourse on the matter, Neon. On just being able to view and define the processes by which we can measure a glitch. I love when you get the, the charge glide just right so he preserves like that forward momentum while getting a nice vertical proxy. Like that was just a beautiful proxy there. What's up, Strawberry Sangria? Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. Hey, Strawberry, did you ever end up uh, writing that song? I remember you posting in my Discord about, like, a song with some lyrics or something. Did you ever end up making that? Or writing that or whatever? Okay, nice. I got a lucky jump there.
You wrote the lyrics? Look at chords get Tell you what, Strawberry, if you like record yourself uh singing it, uh I could try to put chords to it. Just for fun. Just like send a uh, like little voice memo in my Discord or something like that. Collab moment. I mean, I could try. I mean, I'm not gonna guarantee. I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be good or anything. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll try. Like for a, for at least a few minutes. <laughs> Could be a fun thing to play around with on stream. It'll be good. By, it's true. It will be good by default, just by the effort, just by the the concept. Got done with sexy peak. Yeah, that was a good peak, actually. Nice gold right there. Pretty much hit everything in that level, so very nice. We're actually bringing this run back a little bit. I'm kind of surprised. We're back to plus 22. This run is not that bad. It was kind of assed here in uh, Peacekeepers, but you know, things are looking up. Dare I say world recordable still? I don't know. I might, I might be a stretch, but maybe. Pop ballads? You mean like the the Justin Bieber, the the freaking uh, 80s version of Justin Bieber, baby, that I sing penis over? That's what I think of when I think of a pop ballad. But in any case, I'll try. What's up, Wasabi? How am I doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm feeling very comfy. Just talking, chilling. Getting through this run here. Oh, that's not good. I'm certainly gonna have to wait for the cycle here. This is gonna cost me maybe three or four seconds. Perhaps a bit more, we'll see. You'll post the lyrics. All right. If you post just the lyrics and not you singing them, just be aware. I'm just going to write something to those lyrics. <laughs> All right. And it might not be anything close to what you had in mind. So just be aware. If you want it to be something like, like a certain style or something, I recommend singing it. And then I'll play along to that. Know what I'm saying? Even if your singing is off or whatever, you know. At least then I'll get a better idea for the vibe, you know? But if not, that's cool too. You can just post the lyrics and I'll just I'll just make something up that will be completely un probably not at all what you were thinking. Yeah, the glide, the recovery glide on the uh I, well what I was trying to do was the platform was coming down on that when you first enter the area i was on the bad cycle but you can get a cool recovery on the second platform when it's coming down you like charge into it like as it's coming down and hopefully you don't bonk but if you do bonk you can mash x to glide perfectly onto the platform again it's a very uh sketchy little little recovery to make but we're fine i did lose time there though we're probably we're like what plus 30 right now or something yeah C minor. Nice. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> yeah, C minor. <laughs> C minor is fun. You can insta jump to the Yeah, exactly. So if you make if you jump on that second platform as it's coming down, you don't have to wait for it to come back up. You can just What the fuck? Oh, this is all sorts of ass. What the heck? I've never seen cycles like this before. This is very odd. Well, anyways, um, yeah, it's like a nice backup in a, whatever that level is, blow hard, blow dick. Anyway, speaking of cycles, no good cycle for me here. I'll be lucky to hit the bad cycle here. But my only goal here is to just not miss a fucking blue. I know that's going to be my famous last words, but... 
Okay, so I should be... This is the bad cycle right now, but if I play good here, I should be able to catch it still. What's up, Ziltoid? Ooh, barely. Nice. No, blue, are you kidding me? All right, well, we got to wait another cycle because of that fucking stubborn ass blue. And the cycles I'm referring to are these electric pad cycles here that you're seeing. I'm two cycles behind here, which if you think about it, that's like six or seven seconds of just waiting otherwise. No, dude. There's another cycle right there. It's like, it, this level is just like brutal. It doesn't look like much. Like when you're when you're watching me play, it's like, all right, well, okay, you missed a cycle there, you missed a cycle there. But each of those cycles is a three to four second time loss. So at this point, I'm three or four cycles behind. So we're looking at like ten to twelve seconds lost in this level. It's it's quite brutal. Whoops. DJ Fish, thank you for the raid. Ooh, welcome, welcome. Where are my DJ Fishers at? Where are the cute fishes? Let me get some fishies in the chat. Guys, came at a great time. I'm on a pretty decent pace right now. This is not, uh, just fair warning, this is not world record pace. You know, I sort of thrown that. Uh, there was a glimmer of hope of world record in the last home world, but uh, that has since been squashed. But rest assured, this uh, run can still be one of the best ever done. And dare I say, if I hadn't have already set a world record in this game, uh, this run could still potentially get an otherwise world record. Whatever, who cares? World record this, world record that. Who fucking cares? Guys, let's just get fucking comfy and uh, spam some spinning spyro, spam some cute fishes, hype up in the chat, and let's get a good run, man. Good run, good vibes, Papa John's. That's all I'm saying. Oh god. Oh okay. Hold on. Not over yet. My goodness. Uh, we're good. Barely recovered that. You're somewhat of a speedrunner yourself. What game do you run? Lay it on me. There are the spinning spiros. Oh god. I tried flaming them. Sometimes it doesn't work. You do counter strike surfing? Do you do a uh, in global offensive, I assume? I used to surf a bit in uh CS CSS source. Um, that was fun. I was never like super good at it or anything. It was just a fun like little pastime to do while I was stoned home from school in the afternoon. I have a lot of admiration for people who are good at surfing in uh, Source games. It's not an easy feat. You gotta be like a god of the mouse. I've always been a bit more of a controller guy myself. I've never been the most like precise gamer in the world, which is kind of interesting why uh, I'm into Spyro speedrun because there is a lot of precision involved in this run, but um, th I think there's always a little bit of room for error here, which is nice. You do CSS and CSGO. Yeah, I'll have to follow you. I love watching surfing streams. I don't watch enough surfers. 
satisfying. Satisfying to play, satisfying to watch. Oh god, this is not good. Not saving time here. I'll tell you that much. Nice. I'm lucky I got the flame shards on the on the doggy. Whoa. What's up, Ames? Thank you for the good luck once again. Two days in a row with the cute good lucks. Can I get this jump? Oh! <laughs> that little jump off the side of the pole there is like very scary. Because if you fuck it up, you're dead basically. And you like lose, you go all the way back down to the lower area. And you can only jump off of one uh, polygon there. So it's like very, very precise. <laughs> you guys, it's like unnecessarily precise, but also kind of swaggy. It's one of those things. Yeah, you know, to save a second or two, why not? Oh. Oh, I still got him. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. I'll take it. I did take damage there, whatever. The good news is I wouldn't have been saving time anyways, so we're good. Nice. I love cat. Dude, jumping, it's like a very, um small little like movement thing there but jumping into the last two gems of a level like that is just like mwah, you like pause with like the perfect timing otherwise sparks has to like you know grab the gems out of the air and you have to wait for it to home in like that so it's always quite satisfying to get those should follow caffrey he's the top dog for surf streams i'm gonna follow dj fish he, dj fish is the top dog in my book personally I don't know about this cad cad furry cream egg guy that you're referring to, but you know he's gonna have to prove himself to me. I mean, if he's gonna take DJ's spot in the book, that's all I'm saying. The book of epic surfers. Nice, love that. Beautiful dodge on the bananas. I'm starting to figure it out a little bit. You gotta intentionally dodge. Rather than try to outrun the bananas, you gotta like go off to the side of him to dodge them. A little pause to check the gem count. All right, I'm gonna go for the through the wall strat here. No, oh God, I hate missing that. You just look like a fucking idiot every time. Yes, you can go through the wall there. And squeeze in between the poles. Just like your mother. <laughs> nice, good jump into the wind tunnel there. Nice movement. Except for that. Yeah, I'm on a 14 inch and I'm sitting like a foot away from it. So it, it's quite big, I would say for a CRT. It's like, I would call it like a medium sized CRT. It's definitely not a small one. Only losing a second there, not bad. Good luck and love you, bro. Thank you, Trench Dog. Love you too.
Yeah. If you fall into the little green goo that uh, was behind me there, uh, it's an insta-kill. When normally, like, little pools like that, you could jump out of them for only one damage. That one insta-kills you. As if it were, like, you know, lava that was, like, way off in the distance, you know, far away or something. Uh, likely oversight by the development team. Give me a gold, baby. No, but I did save time, though. Not bad. Yeah, I saved like five seconds there. That's pretty hot. Yeah, the Mountain Dew is extra radioactive. Extra corked up goop. Oops. Shocked there. Re <laughs> Excuse me. Really nice end to Beast Makers there. That was a overall solid treetops, very clean metalhead, and just a nice home world, which is good. A gold split occurs when it's uh, the best you've ever done that particular segment of the run. So like, you know, it, since my segments are split up by level, a gold split is basically like saying that's the best I've ever done that level, according to my splits. Now keep in mind, I don't save all my golds, you know, nor do I keep super close track of them. So, you know, there's a, I get a lot of fake golds that aren't necessarily the best I've ever done a level. But they're still good. In any case, if you see a gold on my split, that means I did that level really good. What's world record? Exclamation point WR in the chat. Oh, you recorded? Oh, thanks for doing that, Strawberry. Yeah, I'll th maybe I'll take a look at it after this run. I'm I'm in a in a mood to play some music, some music. Oh, I almost missed that. I like literally hit that flame at the last possible moment. Beautiful proxy right there. Love that. What's a GG to time? You mean good time? For this category, a good time uh, for me? Well, here, look, oh, let's back up. A good time for like your average Spiral 120% runner is probably gonna be anything like in the low 130s, maybe even a sub 130 for a more seasoned runner. Uh, my world record is a 121.03, which is like light years beyond every other player of this game. I, okay, I got that. Uh, so a good time for me is like 123 or better. You like, uh, let's just say 122 or better. 
is like a good time for me. That that is, by the way, like a legendary, legendary. Like even like a 125 is like cause for celebration in like the Spyro speedrunning Discord for someone who you know for someone newer, you could say. What's up, Glitch World? So yeah, that's like the the scope of like times in this category. It's like a 125 is considered really good. And I'm going for like a like on this run, I'm hoping to get a 121. Yeah, my world record is very far ahead. I mean, compared to second and third place, second place is a 121.54 or 52, I think. Um, and third place is a 123, uh, 20 something. So yeah, like, and then it drops off pretty significantly after that. Fourth place is like a 125 and then so on and so forth. Nice, the double gold. Love it. Oh, a GG, like unbeatable time. Well, you know, I, I have a 121.03 and that's like on the verge of like an unbeatable time. Um, I'm going for the for a high 120, which I I'll I think I'll be happy putting the world record grind for this category down with after nine years. Oh damn it! Wasn't supposed to land on that. Nine years of speed running just this category, and I'll and I'll consider it GG'd at at the 120 mark, the high 120s. Of course, I'll still probably keep playing a bit after that. Who knows if I might even improve my PB more, but. It's come a long way, is what I'm trying to say. It's come a very long way, and 121.03 is... I, I would venture to say that, I, I, you know, it's it's entirely feasible that no one's ever going to beat my current record in this category. Now, I hope that's not the case. I hope someone does come along and at least challenge it, but... The only other guy that's been playing this game, like, even close to as long as I have, um, is, like, basically retired and kind of comes and goes from the category, and isn't quite as like hardcore as I am with it. So, and he's like, he's there that come besides him. <laughs> I'm like stuttering and stuff besides him. Uh, there's like not really anyone that's like within minutes of being close. So I, I really, like I said, I, I'm not trying to say it to be like, Oh, I'm cool. You'll never beat my time. Um, I, I'm saying it like, I, I want to see someone like come along and, and do that though. So, the current landscape of Spyro 1 uh, main category speedrunning is such that uh, nobody is currently challenging me or even has a chance at the current moment. Now, in any percent, it's a slightly different story. Uh, Laura, as well as a couple other runners, you know, Toasty Cat's getting closer to the to a low 39. Laura's getting, got a low 39. Um, I have a 37.57 in any percent. And I'm still the only uh, run that, uh, the only 38 or below run that does rat proxy, which is a big time save at the end. That's very inconsistent. So there, there's a lot of, I think, history left to be uncovered, uh, but it, it's all going to come down to, uh, it's all going to come down to how much I push my current records and how much other people are going to catch up to me. It's really like that type of situation right now. I'm, I'm kind of leaving everyone in the dust right now. And again, I don't say that because, oh, I'm fucking cool. I'm just saying it like it is, you know. Hey, you know, granted, it makes sense. I'm like, I'm the only person that, like, speedruns this game full-time, like, on Twitch. As, like, a somewhat justifiable career. <laughs> Though that's sussy on its, on its own right, but, you know. I've been doing this for a long time is my point, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people who are, I don't think there's anybody who's in my position just in terms of like experience and time and devotion and dedication with this game. So it'll, it'll be a, it'll be some time I think before somebody challenges me, but I'm hoping that someone does eventually come along. I think that would be cool. Chris does not still run this game. I mean, you know, periodically, like with Chris and Saboom, they'll like periodically pick the game up, but not like to the extent that I'm like trying to, you know, push like low 121s and 120s and stuff. N not to that level at all. But they, but you know, they'll, Chris and Saboom will play like on, once in a blue moon, you know. You'll see them periodically. I wouldn't say they're like gone forever, but they're, uh, you know, it, I think it's also safe to say they're mostly retired. But, you know. Retirement only lasts as long as, you know, 
you don't pick the game back up. And those guys have been known to do the occasional run here or there. So, and for that, I say respect. How does Saboom sum of best compare to mine? Uh, Saboom sum of best is, I think, technically a little better than mine. Um, if you look at the community sum of best playlist uh, compiled by Flazuki, you'll see that I have about a third of the um, best splits across, you know, the entire community of 120 runners, which again, it's most, it's just me and Saboom on that list, let's be honest. I think JX is on one of them. But uh, yeah, it's the list is basically like a third Saboom, or no, a third me, two thirds Saboom, and then like one of them is JX. Oh, I, you know, I did this totally wrong, by the way. I was supposed to, Clean up the inner area first here. Let me uh, just do this. Oh, that's really bad. Come on. And then I'll have to... Uh, yeah, this is, like, really bad. <laughs> I totally did the wrong uh, route. But it's cool. As long as I know. Oh, I'm going to turn around here. This this level is probably killing my 121 pace right now. If I mean, I'm probably losing like 30 seconds, roughly here, 20 or 30. Bad routing and bad execution overall. But it's I mean you know, to be fair, this is like one of the most complicated levels in the whole fucking run. Ugh, come on. At least I got a free butterfly out of it. And I'll be careful when I exit just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. Yo, Rubix, thank you for the good luck. Appreciate it. What's up, Krusty? Yeah, I, I am quite positive today. I gotta say, overall, uh, things are mega chill today. Okay, so it looks like I'm on um, wall glider out here. Means I gotta go this way. Yeah, Liquid. That, that, I mean, that was a, like I said, I fucked up the route terribly in Lofty there, so do not, like, take that <laughs> that particular execution as a as any sort of standard whatsoever. I, like I said, I lost, like, 20 or 30 seconds there from bad routing and bad execution. Yeah, in general, yeah. You would enjoy speedrun? Oh, you've never speedrun anything before, DJ? I don't know, it'd be a fun thing to get into. I think the hardest thing about speedrunning, or one of the hardest things, is like getting started. You know, once you find a game, I mean, it's enough of an undertaking to like find a game that you want to speedrun, and like really say, okay, I'm gonna sit down and like learn the routes, join the Discord, like watch a video, go level by level, start memorizing like routes and stuff. But, I mean, the hardest part is just getting started. I mean, once you have like a route down. Once you have like some general tech down, once you're like involved and like talking to people and figuring out mechanics and stuff you don't understand, um, then it, then it just gets progressively, I would say, uh, maybe easier is the wrong word, but it gets progressively, yeah, just easier for lack of a better word. More, more, uh, it comes more naturally with time. With time and, um, and effort invested in a game. But that, I mean, like, honestly, like, the, your first year of speedrunning a game is going to be so much mental effort of just learning and trying to figure out routes and then realizing you've been doing something wrong and having to relearn the muscle memory that you've, like, developed. It's, uh, it's quite an undertaking at first. So... But if you can get through all of the uh, hard kind of like, you know, studying, you know, aspects of it, um, the more academic side of it all, if you can get past that initial hurdle, then uh, I'm going to go for this strat. Oh, that was almost sick. Um, then, yeah, you could really, uh, you could really go far in a game. Most people don't get past that point. I'll, I'll say this, like, in general, uh, most people don't get past that first year 
of like initial learning initial like route acquisition you know there's there's always like a deeper layer that you can like you know explore and most people don't really get that super duper deep in their learning they'll 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 put in enough effort to get like a route and then they'll just like run it casually so to speak and and then just kind of like move on and even doing that is a lot of effort so you know all the respect to people who approach speedrunning however they wish Having fun is the most important thing. That's what everyone. Uh, that's what everyone says, and I always make fun of that because, uh, you know, a lot of the things I'm describing are not necessarily fun processes at all. They're like very much like, all right, like enough having fun with the game. Like, go watch a video and try to copy their movements exactly for a level. Then, you know, then go back, try to do it again without looking at the video this time. Like, I, I call me crazy. That it's not the most fun thing in the world to do that. You know, like. It's very much like turning something that's otherwise like a fun casual experience into like a into a much more like like all right here, I have to go this way like all right here's this like now it's a welcome back come coming back to school now you know it turns it into like you're at school you know so I, I I never say that to people I never say like oh just have fun when you're starting I say like I say you know yeah obviously like if you're not having fun that's like bad but um. I would say be ready to not have fun. That's like my actual advice to a beginner in speedrunning. If you like a game enough to be able to like go through like that whole process of like learning a route and like studying and memorizing and sucking and hating yourself and your first, you know, however many, your first year of runs are just gonna be complete ass, you know, be ready for that, you know? Don't, don't like stress too much, you know, but just like, just know that it's not, it's it's probably gonna be more fun for you to, to not go through that process. If we're just talking about fun, you know, like don't speed run, you know, if it's just a matter of just have fun, you know? See what I'm saying? Speedrunning, I think, is, is special because it's about more than having fun. It's about like getting a greater purpose out of a game. A game that you've played like over and over, you know, since you were a kid and, you know, you've hundred percent it a couple times and now there, and now it's like, it's lost, you know, you squeezed it dry of everything. And the only thing that's left for you is to, is to speed run. And then you'll find that the deepest, most like prideful, like pleasure experience you'll get comes from that added like depth that goes way beyond fun. That's what like speed running is all about for me. I mean, that's why do you think I I've been playing this for the past nine years? straight it's definitely not for a twitch paycheck i'll tell you that much well maybe nowadays it is but that's a different story no i don't speed run this game for a paycheck i speed run because i, I quite enjoy it but fun is like i think a strong word to use like just have fun i think it's an oversimplification because i do have fun fun does exist here it's not like a non-existent thing but it is hard to come by, and there's a there's a lot more than just fun in this whole equation going on. And it's like that when you try to get good at anything, you know, in life. It's like, yeah, just have fun, lol. But except when you like are actually trying to, you know, break down your muscle memory and like learn something that you don't understand already. You know, those those processes are usually not like the most fun thing. I'm not saying they're always unfun to like learn stuff, but you know. It takes a certain level of work ethic, that's all I'm saying, and just have fun uh, almost leads you in the wrong direction when it comes to like having the right work ethic to get better at something. Anyways, plus 120, oh my god, it's like written in the stars that I should get a 120 in this category. We are on a 122 pace right now. That's not too shabby. Let's see if we can close it out. Let's see what you guys are saying. It's frustrating, but the grind is fun. Yeah, you gotta like find the fun in your own way. You find a game you can still play a bazillion times. Having fun is the most important thing. And close you out. <laughs> What's up, waifu? I'll close something. Not your heart, though. That one I want to leave wide open. But yeah, you know, it's a it's a messy thing. Our emotions and our uh, motivations for 
for dumping so many hours into something to get good at it. And I, I really do honestly b believe it does go beyond fun. It's like a fun derived from something a little deeper than fun itself. Fun as a word is like a very surface level emotion almost, you know? But it can, I don't know, it's... But when I think about like all the time I've spent speedrunning this game, you know, a lot of it has been a not fun time. <laughs> and a lot of it has been fun and... And if I were thinking the whole time, this this I know for sure. If I were thinking the whole time, just have fun, don't worry. If you start not having fun, then stop and have fun, then I probably wouldn't have made it this far. That's like one just like little piece, like food for thought, you know? That's not to say don't have fun or don't, you know, think about that, but, you know. The work required to get good at something is usually not like super fun. And I think being prepared for that is more valuable than just focusing on the fun part. Because the type of fun I have in this game is I get to feel a feeling that no other human has ever felt before in this game, you know? And that's really special. That's like, that's like fun times like a billion. But you know, it's all perspective. I get to experience something that no one, that no, that very few people have even come close to experiencing. And that is fun, but it takes a lot of unfun work to get there, for sure. Fulfilling, you know? It's about fulfillment, really. Like, is it about fun or is it about fulfillment? That's the distinction. But yeah, just have fun, you know? It's just everything's fun. <laughs> There's nothing sad about anything. I don't get sad. What? Speedrunning and, and depression? No, not me. You kidding me? Only fun. Especially when you're new and you don't know anything and you hate everything you do. That's the most fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, fuck. I missed the... <laughs> I hate getting the accidental rat there. Look at this. What ass. And I still have to collect some gems after. So yeah, fun's a messy thing. Oh, man. Just have fun. Just have fun. Just have fun. Oh god, how many times did he write that? Oh, thank God. <laughs> I thought that was going to be like a wall of just have fun. It's like, oh, no. The voices are speaking to me again. Just have fun and be ready to not have fun. That's like the important caveat to that. And thank you, Glitch World. Appreciate it. Yes, I am going to GDQ, Mr. Waifu. Can't wait to shred uh, Minnesota with you. It's going to be a banger. I'm assuming that you're going. I don't know if you are or not. Oh, no, I missed the other yellow. That's okay. Just a little time loss. We're still well on the 122 pace here. That is the plan, beautiful. Why don't you restart a run if it's not world record pace? Because uh, I don't want to. Pretty simple. I enjoy more, you know, I'm mean, going back to the, to the thought of fun. I mean, like, 
there is an element of like I have more fun just no resetting it is about having fun like I maybe I, I don't want to like miss talk here and say that having fun isn't important because that's the whole like thought process behind this run but just having some fun just chatting you know because you know like if I'm trying to get world record every run dude that that's just a recipe for depression right there that's like a recipe for you're not going to finish a run most days and if you don't finish a run most days, um, you get pretty sad. And not to mention, um, you get pretty rusty in the late game if you really do that for a few days and you just don't get into the late game. It's like, then you start to have issues with your practice levels. So there's a lot of reasons not to reset. Uh, you know, and you look at it from my perspective. I'm like a Twitch streamer, right? There's like a few hundred people just chilling here. Um, I I think just based off of my experience, I think they prefer watching me play the whole game, you know, rather than just like me being in the first few levels over and over. I prefer that also, you know, it's just a generally more wholesome and chill and exciting and fun experience um, to not reset, even if a run isn't world record pace. And part, part of the magic and I think like the skill in speedrunning is learning to appreciate a run that's not like your PB, but you know, it still can get close or you have good recovery or something like that. Those those sorts of elements, being able to pick those out and be like, well, this level sucked, but man, I really brought it back here. Or, oh, I fucked up this trick, but the whole rest of the level went well, which is those types of things are in a lot of ways more impressive than just doing a level perfectly. So looking at it from all those angles, you know, you can see why no resetting is oftentimes like a good call. Uh, but not every speedrunner looks at it that, that way. I mean, you know, the, the reality is that some speedrunners just re reset more than others. It's just like we all have a different human nature and preference with it. Because at the end of the day, it's true. When a run can't world record, or PB for that matter, when a run can't PB, it can't PB. So if you're trying to PB, you should reset. Like, that is also true, you know. There's a balance somewhere in there between your emotions and the objective reality of, like, attaining, like, a long-term goal like a PB. I look at PBs like a long-term goal, though. I don't think every speedrunner does. I'm so lucky I got that proxy. I thought I was going to get squished for sure. Nice. 123 it is. Or 122, I mean. It is. Just barely, though. I'm going to be losing a few seconds on this level exit. Um, if I was at zero lives, I wouldn't have to exit the level. It would just game over me to back to the home world, saving a few seconds all this time here. So it, it, it might be close. This might be a high 122 here. You want an entire stream of just Sunny Flight? Sure. If you want to practice any game, you have to play the whole game through. I mean, that's not true, DJ. I mean, you can run, you can actually use save states on console in this game now. That wasn't true for many years, but if it's just a matter of practice, I mean, you can use save states in almost any game with the use of like, you know, hacked memory card, even on console, like with the, in this game, at least, you can use like a hacked memory card to uh, practice whatever section of the run you want. I don't because I've already like practiced so much of it over the years. By the time they came out with a fucking uh, save state memory card, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's fine. I'll, all I do anyways is like, I just warm up at the start of the day, you know, do a few levels and then just hop into runs and then do a no reset. And by extension of that approach, I end up getting a lot of practice across the whole game. It's a different kind of practice, sure. Not as focused, but I've, I've already done many years of very focused practice, so. I think I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a special case, but still, it, it it wouldn't hurt for me to get a, a safe state memory card and work on some some weird strats here or there. But overall, like I, overall, I'm quite committed. Here's another thing: is uh, when you're committed to a route and you have that down to your muscle memory, is you really want to stick to that route. Like even if there's like a slightly different strat that might be slightly better, um, it's quite an undertaking to shift your muscle memory into another direction. And I have I have really trained my muscle memory in this game to to do all of this shit that you're seeing. Like that second plane that I just killed right there, that shit took me years to figure out. Years to figure that out. Of just running this level back over and over without a memory card, just death abusing and going back over and over, you know? So, 
I'm at a point now where I'm just, I'm honing my, my route, you know, and rather than trying to practice individual sections and learn, relearn muscle memory. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh. Should have jump charged that. I try, I, I was thinking in my head I was gonna go for the flop strat there, but oh, I'm done. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But like, yeah, that would be like one thing to work on with a, with a hacked memory card. Anyways, 122? Yeah, 12250. This was actually this time, fun fact, I think, was the first ever 122 ever gotten in this game. By Saboom, all the way back in 2018, I think. There was not a new world record in this category um, beyond Saboom's 122. And by the way, thank you for the GGs, everyone. Uh, Saboom got a 122.40 something in this category. His first one was like a 122.50 or something like that. Then he got, he eventually brought it down to a 122.40 in 2018. Two years passed before I was able to uh, lower his uh, 122 to a 122.13 in uh, December of 2020. It's a long time. Two years of no world record content. And hey, if it weren't for me, maybe the record would still be around this time think about that anyways it was a fun run it was a good time and uh yeah i'm uh, i'm big comfy this was a really comfy run I, I was quite talkative today i think and uh you know for better or for worse want to hear something funny than 24 25 months of twitch prime subscription money Thank you. Not Prime, actual real monetary monies. Well, hey, Chuggers in the chat for Rico and all the generous chatters. Like I was saying, um, I was quite talkative today. I was quite chill. My, um, I think my energy and focus levels were, were all there. Part of, part of me wanted to uh, kind of go a little bit more quiet and just game and just play and focus and, you know, really PB grind. I was kind of trying to do that at first, but... You can't deny how you're feeling in a given day. And today I was just feeling like talking and, you know, talking about what is a glitch, you know, talking about uh, fucking rest in peace, Gilbert Gottfried, you know, shout outs to him. This run was for him, by the way, Gilbert Gottfried, loved the parrot from Lion King. That guy was tight or pardon me, uh, Aladdin. That guy was tight. And uh, yeah, man, just good vibes all around today all around this this run not only was this run for gilbert godfrey rest in peace but it was also for my grandma who passed away a couple days ago rest in peace to her as well i'm gonna be heading out to um, missouri hopefully sometime soon once we get the internet situation squared away out there and hopefully spend an extended period of time out there where she uh raised my entire mom's family including myself and uh i'm looking forward to all of that so gonna take advantage of this uh more solemn point in time you know looking at the deaths of others as a way to um appreciate what we have appreciate the family around us and for me you guys are like my family the twitch chat that i spend every day with all of these uh familiar names um you know it's not lost on me when when my grandma passes away and i spend all this time around my my parents and my sister here at the house and I come to appreciate that. I appreciate you guys in a similar way. Uh, not the same way, but in a similar way. And so uh, just know that with each uh, passing day, uh, our love grows stronger. The power of friendship is what's going to get us the 120 in 120%. And on that note, let's get some jams going up in here. Oh, just kidding. It's not a jam. It's a, it's a comfy jam. Damn. 